Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am filming today on a Saturday. This is the first Saturday I've had off in about six weeks and the only Saturday I'm gonna have off for the next five weeks. So I am definitely taking it easy today. And on days like today, I really like to do a no makeup makeup look. So I decided to film it for you, but I didn't just film one look, I filmed two looks. So I filmed my most minimal look and then I amped it up a little bit, which is what you're seeing now, and gave you two options, two ways that I like to do a no makeup makeup look. Super simple, easy, minimal amount of product. Still, the full look takes under 10 minutes very uncomplicated. <laughs> so I wanted to share that with y'all since this is a perfect day for me to do it. I thought I would hop on camera and show you how I do it. So let's jump in to me completely barefaced and I will show you two different looks to achieve a very put together look without many steps. All right, this is me, fresh face, straight after my skincare routine, minus the most important part of my skincare routine, which is a part of my no makeup makeup look, and that is my SPF. So I wanted to apply my SPF on screen with y'all because when I am truly doing no makeup days, this is the most important part. It gives me a little bit of coverage. This is the L to MD UV Elements Broad Spectrum SPF 44. I don't know why I don't have that memorized because this has to be the 20th tube I have gone through. Out of all of my SPFs, I would probably still put this as number one. I have quite a few that I love for no makeup days, but this one is obviously the one I've been using a lot lately and it just, to me, gives the most skin-like finish without too much coverage. If I want more coverage, I'm gonna go with my Elastin Hydro Tint, which I absolutely love. But I have just found, especially this time of year where it's getting a little bit warmer, I reach for the Elta MD. The most important thing, in my opinion, to remember when putting on SPF is making sure you are putting on enough. I know sometimes it feels like you'll never be able to rub it in. A lot of that has to do with formula, but this is why I always say, one of the reasons I always say, don't rely on your foundation to be your SPF coverage because you will never put on as much foundation as you need to get the coverage it says it has. So I'm gonna take four pumps of the L to MD and I am just gonna apply this like a moisturizer. I'm gonna cover my lips all over my face. I don't care if, if it gets on my eyelids, that's fine. I'm gonna put more on my neck, but then once I get like, get it nice and rubbed in, I don't wanna manipulate it too much. So then I just start tapping it in to make sure there's no like streak marks anywhere. So see, you can still see my redness, right? It gives a tiny bit of coverage and a lot of the tint is also to make sure the zinc oxide doesn't create a white cast because this is a fully physical sunscreen. It just has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. So I'm gonna take a few more pumps for my neck and anything else that's showing, depending on what I'm wearing that day. I'll put some on my ears. And I typically have another SPF. I like the UV Physical 41, I think it is, from Elta MD for my body. So, you know, before I go out or anything, I will put some on my arms or anything else that's showing. Every day, but especially on the days where I'm not gonna be wearing makeup, I take just a very small amount and I will tap it under my eyes. Now I am gonna use an additional concealer for a tad bit of lighter coverage, but this gives me protection under my eyes and takes down the darkness just a little bit. That is the number one thing I'm going to do. Now, I gotta put on some brows. Y'all know I do not have brows. I've never had the best brows, but ever since I have been diagnosed with hypothyroidism a little over 13 years ago, I have little baby brows. So I am gonna fill those in. Now, something I do every single day because usually I come in directly after skincare to do makeup is I will take my Jane Iredell Beyond Matte Pressed powder. I think maybe I've talked about it a couple other times, but typically y'all don't see me use this. You can see I've hit pan. This is my second pan. I obviously use it a lot. It's just in steps that I don't usually show on camera. So I'm going to take this Beyond Matte, which is a very matte powder, and I'm going to lightly swipe it over 
my brows and brow area, anywhere I'm going to be using a pencil. This is going to take down the tackiness of the SPF so that my pencil has something to adhere to and it doesn't just kind of slip and slide. So if you feel like maybe you have a waxier formula of a pencil and it just kind of goes everywhere, this is a step to do beforehand and it's really gonna help your pencil stick to the skin. Lately, I have really been using my Beauty Pie Super Brow Precision Pencil a lot. I've gone through quite a few of these and I typically use the brown shade. However, if I know I'm doing a no makeup day, I will switch to blonde because brown works when I have a full face of makeup on, but it can look a little harsh if I don't. So if I know I'm not gonna be putting anything on, I'm gonna go a step down in color and I'm going to use blonde girl. So I'm going to fast forward through this because it's really not that exciting, but I just wanted to show you step by step and I make sure I always have my brows on. Even if I don't do anything else, I will do my SPF and my brows every single day. And that powder that I used at the end is the MAC Shadow in Omega. And that's basically what I use every day as a powder to kind of set and refine. Now, if you feel like, oh wow, my brows are still a little bit too dark, when you do your brows, you can go in with the same powder that you use to kind of set the tackiness down and lightly go over what you just did and that will dial them down just a little bit. Now I'm gonna go in with what I use to prime my eyes every single day. I get asked about this so much because I always do this off camera, but it is always the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer, and I use the shade Honey. I have one coming to me right now from NARS as a backup because I don't wanna be without this. This is the perfect shade for me. I have a lot of discoloration on my eyelids, as you can see anytime I do a skincare video or as you can see right now, and I truly need to cover that up. So this is a step that I do and I just feel like it makes such a difference. The Honey shade is great for me because it has a very peachy undertone which corrects that darkness and discoloration that I have all over my lids. So I'm just going to pat just a very small amount of that on. And then I'm gonna take this same powder, see how much I use it every day, and I'm going to set that down. So do you see the huge difference in making sure all that discoloration is gone and still having all of that discoloration. I also feel like when you do this to an eye and you take the discoloration away from the lid, it also kind of makes the under eye look a little less dark, in my opinion, because you don't have the shadows playing off of each other. So definitely just a step that to me needs to be done to make me appear more awake. Okay, now I am gonna take the Clinique Airbrush Concealer that I use very often for my corrector nowadays. Ever since I tried it, I just loved it for that. But I'm just gonna put just a little bit on. This is also in the shade Honey. And I'm going to pat that out with my finger. Now this is not going to provide a ton of coverage, but it is gonna amp up the coverage of that SPF just a little bit. This one to me wears really well without a powder. And on no makeup days, when I'm doing very minimal, like I'm showing you here, I don't set my under eyes. And so I wanna make sure I use something that's super lightweight, also does the job of giving me a little bit of coverage but that's not going to like wear off throughout the day. And if I wanted to, I can take just a little bit, kind of tap it over my redness. And that's also something I suggest doing, finding you a concealer, even if you typically like to do, you know, brighter under eyes and go a shade or two brighter under the eyes on a full makeup day, I would still invest in a concealer. That is the shade of your face so that you can do light concealing like this. But again, I don't set it with powder. I don't feel the need to. Now, I do think any no makeup makeup look still isn't complete without mascara. So I'm gonna curl my eyelashes. This is the Kevin Aquan Lash Curler and it is my fave. 
Before I put mascara on though, I'm gonna do another step that I just don't ever skip. And honestly, even if I'm not going to wear mascara, because there are days where I just don't wanna bother with it, I will still do this step. So I'm gonna take my Pixi Endless Silky Eye Pen, and this is in Black Noir, and I'm gonna use this to tight line which is just that little kind of strip of skin that your lashes grows out of. And that in of itself makes that lash line pop. It makes the color of my eyes pop, I feel like. It just makes you look like you have thicker, fuller lashes. It gives that effect without having to do any upper eyeliner or anything like that. It's just something I don't skip if I'm going to be wearing any semblance of makeup. So I also like to go very light on the mascara on no makeup makeup days. I don't like to do all the primers and all that kind of stuff that I typically like to do because I just feel like that makes it look like, oh wow, look at her lashes, but where's the rest of her face, right? Like I just feel like you have to balance things out to make it look truly natural. So I'm going to use the Beauty Pie Uber Volume Boost Mascara because I love the brush. It's very thick and fluffy, and I just feel like it gives very fluffy lashes. And fluffy is what I'm looking for on a no makeup makeup look. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of that. And I'm only doing one coat, because again, I want it to be more natural, and I'm not putting any mascara on my bottom lashes, which is something I tend to do every day. Now the final step is lip gloss. I'm gonna use my Buxom White Russian. This usually lives in my purse because I use it all the time. And that is my true no makeup makeup look. Very, very minimal, takes me no longer than three minutes, three or four minutes, I guess, if you include my brows, which I can get done very quickly now. I have a lot of practice, but I just feel put together. I feel like I can go out, I'm protected with my SPF, and I'm ready for the day. Now, if I wanna go a step further, which I'm going to today for the sake of this video, but also because we have people coming over later for dinner and I just wanna look a little bit more put together, I will add a few more steps, but it's still very minimal. And the best part about it is that I can go in directly on top of what I've already done to amp it up just a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit more coverage and unity to my face with the Jane Ardell Pure Press Base. This is in Golden Glow. Very, very easy to do. I'm just going to apply that all over very quickly. I have a full review of this powder foundation. I will put a card up. It wears so beautifully over the Elta MD SPF. It does have an additional SPF in it. I do not rely on that, but it certainly does not hurt. I'm going to take a touch more of this Clinique concealer just in the darkest parts of my eye, tap that out, and then I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush and the same powder and lightly use that to set that down. Very lightly. You don't wanna use a ton of it because it does have coverage, but I still feel like it wears nicely when you use a light amount under the eye. Now I say this, all the time, but if I'm gonna wear a foundation, the one other product that I'm gonna wear is bronzer. I just feel like foundation kind of makes everything one tone, it evens you out, but you need to put a little bit more dimension into your face. So I'm not gonna do blush and I'm not gonna do highlight, but I am gonna add a little bit of bronzer and I'm gonna use my MAC Give Me Sun, which I've talked a lot about lately as being just a go-to, especially this time of year because it does have kind of that warmer undertone and this is the Sigma F78 brush, which I absolutely love. This is their new ultimate bronzer brush. And I'm just gonna use that to lightly bronze up my face. So the perimeter of my forehead, cheekbones, and because I'm not you know, using any other products, I can put it on my cheeks as kind of a blush, put it a little bit over my nose, just don't have to be as precise with it. I am also going to use the same bronzer with a Refer 27, which is a nice fluffy eyeshadow brush, and just put this in my crease. It can go on my lid if I want it to. It's not gonna mess up the mascara that I already have on because it's just going on the crease, right? I'm not trying to be precise. I just wanna give a little bit of definition to the eyes, make them more cohesive with the rest of the face. 
I love this shade as an eyeshadow. I've talked about that so many times, I know. And then I'm gonna put a little bit with a smaller brush under the eye. At this point, I am gonna add a little bit of lower lash mascara to amp up the eyes a little bit. And I'm using my MAC Giga Black Lash. This is a tubing mascara. The size of the wand is perfect for the lower lashes. So it makes ease of application just right. But being a tubing mascara, it's not going to smudge or do any of those things you don't want lower lash mascaras to do. You know, I think sometimes y'all see this mascara on my fingers. It's because after I do that, I always smudge a little bit with my finger to make sure none of the, you know, still wet mascara on the very tips of my lashes transfers down. And then if you want, you can add just a little bit more of the mascara used on top. I find that this one actually layers with itself very well, even if I do wait a few minutes in between. Add a touch more lip gloss if you want. And that's the amped up version. Still super quick. That would only take an additional two or three minutes on top of it. So you could do this entire look in 10 minutes tops, but it gives you a couple of steps to take. So if you really just want to, you know, run some errands, if I didn't have people coming over later, if I was really just spending a nice leisurely time at home or running a few errands, I definitely would have stopped midway, but this is a very easy way to amp it up a little bit, feel a little bit more put together, but still have it be very simple. So hopefully you enjoyed this. As always, I will list and link everything that I use down in the description box below. Let me know if you have any questions. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope y'all all go out and have a very blessed day.